morning guys welcome to saturday lucky saturday saturday the day that sophie and i are exhausted <laughs> why are we exhausted because yeah we have a baby oh so oh he's jumping let me see if i can show you he just had a meal but he's doing so good <laughs> she's getting engorged a little on the one side though so there he is he's so super cute he's been hopping around He's nice and warm and cozy. Mom is doing an amazing job. It is 11 a.m. and we're just headed down now. We, um, I kept my monitor on all night long, all night long. My phone woke me up so many times, it was insane. We went down last night at 9 p.m., midnight, 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. And we're going down now. The reason we went down so often in the middle of the night was because it was getting to be frigid temperatures out and we needed to make sure that he's warm. We put this little bed in there for him with a with a light, which I showed you guys, but it's not so super strong. And Sam cut a big hole in the opening. Ideally, you would cut just like a little opening for the baby to get in so that it conserves heat. They literally just went in there, which is so good. But I did notice on the camera a few times last night after he would get up to nurse, he would go and sleep outside that thing with the heater. So I was really nervous. I just wanted to make sure that he was warm. It's definitely something that can, it's definitely a real issue when you live in a, a cold climate and you have frigid temperatures, like anything can happen. A baby goats have a really hard time regulating. Well, actually some baby goats have a really hard time regulating their temperature for the first three or four days which is why we put a sweater on him. He was born in the freezing cold, frigid temperatures. And he is maintaining his temperature. He is a really healthy, strong little guy. Yesterday I didn't clean my house at all, so I'm trying to catch up on that today. Today we're gonna take the milking machine down and see what we can uh, maybe do with that. Sylvia and I are getting ready to go down right now and we're gonna check on them and see how mama is and I'll explain what our issue is. I feel like we should talk about some of the things that happened the last couple of days that I didn't get a chance to explain in the video. So number one was we were so shocked. We were freaking out about the baby because we were so shocked. Had it not been a surprise that he was here, we wouldn't have been like freaking out. But we were freaking out because he was a surprise. And you're probably thinking, Laura, you knew she was due. Why was it a surprise? I have to keep the door closed so that the cold doesn't come in. It's freezing out today. So the reason that we were surprised is because of this. She was only bred once. I was really sure of her due date. Typically, a goat will give birth from day 140 to 150 with 145 being the average. She gave birth on day 149, but that's not what confused me. <laughs> you getting out for free roll? Come on, honey. <laughs> what confused me was the fact that a baby should be born 24 hours after an udder pop. And so you guys saw, I showed you, her udder popped. And then we watched her like a hawk for 24 hours oh, and nothing happened. <laughs> there was no baby. There were nothing, nothing else happened. Her udder stayed the same. Previously in her pregnancy, she had a little tiny udder pop. And then... <laughs> I love it. And then it just stayed the same for a while until it popped again. So we... Because the 24 hours went by, she didn't give birth, I couldn't figure it out. I even was talking to my friend that morning and said like, I don't understand, this is for sure her due date. She never got free another day. We didn't intentionally breed her. She crawled under the tiniest spot under a fence that only she was small enough to fit through. She's so energetic. <laughs> so well, we were sure of her dates. So then we came down a couple hours later and the baby was born. So it was just such a surprise because after she didn't get birth, she didn't get birth after the 24 hours, I thought, okay, we're waiting for her udder to pop even more. It wasn't a true udder pop, but lo and behold, she just took 48 hours instead of 24 hours. So that's why we were so surprised. That's why we were so shocked. Even though we all dreamed that we were gonna find a surprise baby. These playmates. <laughs> it's good for them to get out and... <laughs> He's so cute. So he is feeling a lot stronger, but he's stretching out and he's coming into himself. Good girl. Some people will see this video now though, and they will think that Blossom is unhappy with her baby 
going out there and she's actually not unhappy she's doing exactly what she should be doing she's monitoring the situation she him out here. and yeah and she's keeping eye on him and this is really good practice for when she eventually gets out <laughs> in the herd <laughs> with oh, her so baby <laughs> Look, he looks like he grew taller already but I think it's just because his little limbs unfolded even more oh, <laughs> he gets really mad when he falls She's not scared of me. Yeah. She knows us. She's a domesticated goat that's been hand fed and reared specifically since we've got since we've had her to be a friendly goat and to understand us. Yeah. Hi Winston. Come here, Winston. He's like, eh, no. He's so cute. Oh, buddy. He thinks he can nurse from you, Sophie. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> did that. You're so talkative. Blossom is doing exactly what she's supposed to. She's she watching her baby. She's taking care of him. She's making sure he's safe, but she's not freaking out because she trusts us and she knows that he is safe with us. And how she knows it is because we've taught her over the last 24 hours that we are safe and that we won't hurt her baby. And that's called socialization. I believe that whenever you have a child or a pet or any kind of animal that is super nervous or super scared, then that doesn't mean leaving them alone and backing away from them so that they're not scared. It means teaching them not to be scared. As long as the situation is safe, like being handled by a like being handled by a human, then it's super important to socialize your pet. He is never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Blossom. Come on. <laughs> He's so sassy. Yeah, that's what I said. Grab her bucket. And... She's like, I'll go in here. <laughs> he won't. Here he comes. Oh no. <laughs> here, go get some grain in it. <laughs> so that's the policy that we live by with our kids and with all of our animals. If they're afraid of something that's healthy and natural and normal, then we work harder to make them feel more comfortable. We don't back away and encourage them to feel that their fear was justified. Holding a newborn goat, baby goat, is not gonna make the mom refuse it unless it is in a huge herd that is far removed from society and socialization. So if someone has like a herd of 300 goats and they're far out there and in the, in the pastures and they're not handled and they're not around people very often then that might cause that situation but if your herd is a tiny little herd that is hand fed often that you interact with at least two times a day but usually three four or five times a day if you have worked with them to get them socialized to the point where you can put them on a milking stand and you do their feet and you and you touch their udders and get them prepared for milking that's not likely going to be an issue a goat can definitely smell their smells on their baby even if it's handled by people but the most important thing that I wanted to say was that there's a mindset out there that says that you should never interfere with birth you should never interfere with any part of the birthing process or any part of the child the the baby process because the goat knows what to do and in reality in the wild 63% of babies make it past birth and lots of those babies die 
as they get a little bit older. For example, our little goat is only nursing on one side. She's encouraging him to nurse on one side and because of that, she's getting a lopsided udder and she's getting incredibly engorged on one side. In the wild, this would continue and she would probably get mastitis and she would eventually die and then the kid would die as well. So the fact that we're able to come down and milk her out on the side that she he isn't drinking from and try to encourage him to nurse from that side every single time we come down here, that means that they have such a better chance at survival. We're always going to take the steps to make sure that our herd has the highest chance for survival. It is freezing in here today. How is he? Is he warm? Obviously he's so warm. Excited. <laughs> he's jumping. Yes, wild animals are designed to give birth on their own. They can do it. And so can we give birth on our own. And in fact, we have given birth on our own generations and generations and generations before but does that mean that we should does that mean that they should it's safer and better if you have somebody there just to make sure everything's going okay and that is always our plan but i also want to take one last second to point out something else because we have dairy goats we have goats that we want to milk it's imperative for them to be friendly and the only way you can make friendly goats is to handle them and to get them used to being around people and when you do that is at the very beginning so that it's not a shock to them and so that they learn it because they're dairy goats it's even more important for them to be handled because we're going to be handling them when we milk them he's and obviously handled and if you can tell yeah and some people think oh well he's a boy he doesn't need to be handled because he's not going to be milked and the problem with that is that he is a boy and that means that he's destined for a for a family farm a pet home he's destined for a family pet home and nobody wants a pet that isn't friendly because he's a miniature goat it is important to us to make sure that he's super friendly so that he doesn't end up in a sales barn one day because he's a mean goat. Does that make sense? We'll do everything that we need to to make sure that he's a friendly goat so that he can go on in his life and do the job that he's born to do and be successful. So those are all my reasons, but the most important thing of all, this is what we want from our goats. We want our pet dairy goats to be friendly, to be touchable, to be approachable for all the reasons that I stated above. Uh -huh. And if that's not what you want your goats to be for, then you should do it the way that you want. If you don't want to interfere and you don't want to help when there are situations that need your help or that could use your help for safety reasons, then that is up to you. And there are many right ways to do the same thing. And I think that everybody deserves the opportunity to do it their own right way. And this is our own right way. Hi. And as you can see, she actually doesn't mind us being in here at all. And in fact, because she's getting engorged on the one side, when we come and we milk her out, she's so happy. She's so relieved when I wash her udder and I relieve that pressure for her. She is just so much happier. And we are working with him to get him to nurse on both sides. Oh, and, and again, somebody did say that every time we interfere or come in here, we're taking away a feeding that could be happening. And that is just not true. He we eat in front of us. We take opportunities all the time to help him learn to nurse. We put him on the side that he's not nursing on. We make sure he nurses before when we first come down. We make sure that he nurses before we leave. We made sure he nursed in the middle of the night. We made sure he was in here. We he's so sassy. Wow. Come here, bud. Taking responsibility for domesticated animals to me is a necessity and it's not something that you should choose to do or not. But that's just me. Everyone has the right to do it their own way and we are always going to choose <laughs> to do it the way that we feel best to, to make sure that our animals are the safest and the healthiest and the happiest. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to explain our where we're coming from and and the way the reasons that we do the things that we do there are so many dairy farmers that that sell bottle baby goats they give birth and the next day after they have some colostrum they take the babies away and they sell them and then they just use them the goat for milk and that's that's what they want their goats for that's not what we want our goats for we have different we have a different plan for our goats that involve us being involved and us touching them and us participating in their growth. His personality is definitely his mother's.
Yeah, he's amazing. He's like, I want to go back out there. She just stands here and nurses and lets us relieve the pressure on her udder. It is really cold outside and really cold in this barn. It's supposed to be warmer next week. Okay, so Sylvia and I fight over milking, but look at how much milk this girl has. She has a lot of milk. This is all the milk that he didn't drink on one side. So already in five hours, he's had at least this much milk from his mom in the other half. He's had this much milk. Even more because her yeah, we, one side's still a bit bigger. Yeah, but anyways, it, there are so many ways you can handle a situation like this, but it's really important that she doesn't get mastitis and it means milking that one side out so that she doesn't get sore. The worst part of her getting engorged is that he is unable to latch because her nipple get her teeth gets so hard and distended and he can't latch onto it. So that's why he only goes to one side because one side gets engorged and he can't nurse off that side. So he's learned to nurse off the other side. We take the pressure off and then we try and put him on that side and let him finish nursing that side. But you can see her udder is almost even now. We should go check for goose eggs. All right, well first let's put him on and see if we can get him to... There we go. So she's trying to get him on. We've never got him on this side before. He just, it's just not... So we try and put him on this side after we... Here, stick it in his mouth there. But he comes and he nurses on the right, on the side that he likes. Every single time we milk her out, he nurses on the other side. So he fills up his belly. So then when it's time for us to try, oh, he's doing it. He doesn't want help. That's his thing. He doesn't want help. Oh, this is the first time we've ever got him on. No, he's not on. Oh, but he was headbutting her. I feel like he just does that sometimes. <laughs> So anyways, that's the last time, hopefully, that I'm going to spend a whole video explaining the things that we do and why we do them. I know most people were really, really kind and they just didn't understand where we were coming from or why we did the things we did or why we do the things that we do. And that's okay, but I just wanted to take one video, explain it all. I hate to make videos like this, though, that are not, like, super fun because... I'm explaining all the reasons that we do stuff, but I really should explain a little more as we're going along. While our 20 minute videos show us in the goat barn with the baby goat and spending time with them, we're only in the barn for 20 minute intervals throughout the day just to make sure that everything is going well. Blossom is alone 24 seven with her baby and their bond is inseparable. Doesn't fall over anymore when he does that. Yeah, he's getting really, really strong. We spray his umbilical cord. We did it like three times yesterday and we did it just once today just to make sure, but it's drying up nicely and it just is, prevents infection. So we're gonna head up and we're gonna leave them alone again night we won't come down at all in the night good <laughs> sleep i know oh he tried to follow you yeah i'm sure she's bored i'm sure you're bored you look like a little show goat like that blossom she looks really cute i'm super grateful to have this milk i'll filter it 
so happy Blossom had a first baby. I'll just filter it and get all the hairs and stuff out of it and then I'll freeze it and I'll keep it for any other possibilities. You never know when you're going to need goat's milk. I want to just check on these guys. I know that they're there because they've been banging on the door. Oh my gosh, you guys are eating so much. Look at the belly on her. Do you guys see it? She has three weeks to go and she has four weeks to go. Three weeks and that's her belly. And he has no weeks and that's his belly. <laughs> Here's your egg and your plant. Oh my gosh! What? <laughs> it's like a miracle every day on our farm now. You guys, this is our very first ever duck egg. She's so excited too. Was she? Yes, she did you know I hear her yelling? I did hear her yelling. Wow. wow. So typically, let's go congratulate her. Typically, ducks will start laying at the end of February. So we knew it was coming any time. She was so excited. Are you so excited? <laughs> she says, yes. Yes, I am. Wow. That's amazing. You're not eating it. Sophie doesn't let me eat the eggs. I know. She wants to collect them. It's a item. <laughs> It's actually so cold outside, we can't even breathe in the wind. It's so cold outside. Like so cold. Oh, it's way colder. It's colder now than the first time we were out this morning. But the baby is really warm. They're using the hot image? Ish. He sometimes Close uses it. Eyes. What do you think we got? Egg. Close your eyes. I see it though. Two eggs. Two Lucy eggs. egg. There's a Lucy egg too, and now you know the goose made the big one. Yeah, for sure. Egg. Two eggs. Oh, that's good. We got two girls. Yeah. Yep. Now we just need a boy. This is Blossom's milk from one side of her udder. Isn't that a lot of milk? Yeah. Like for a first freshener, with it 24 hours after giving birth, this is half of the milk that she's made. He's drank the other half of this milk. Yeah. That's and this isn't even concluding the colostrum. This is just from this morning. So this is just like five hours worth of milk. Half. This is probably like two and a half hours worth of milk. So it's not enough to make cheese yet. Not yet. <laughs> We're saving this for babies. Don't you know that you're beautiful? Just the